and uh, welcome back everybody okay let's uh, get cracking into it so the last um, uh, video uh, we created we added a plasterboard to that wall there um, and I drew a little bit of this so at least we knew where we were okay so first thing I'm going to do here is that I'm going to hide this DWG um, CAD file because it's getting in my way okay so I'm just going to click on it okay if I right click I can see hide and view here and elements or category so I've only selected one element so I'm just going to hide that particular one but I could hide, hide an entire category so if I selected one wall and went hide category it would hide every single wall in that particular view but we're just going to go hide and view by elements selected okay and just go left click for that done okay so now we're basically left just with the bones of our um, design okay so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to basically just do a bit of street chain and things like that and we're just going to place a um, start putting some walls down okay so we still got our 250 um, timber plus 10 mil plaster and um, I'm just going to take it down to sort of roughly, I suppose roughly this shape okay so I'm going to plonk a um, garage in this place here uh, I've got a little bit of a setback here. I'm leaving it quite short in this regard because uh, down the track we can use this assess this um, project to create a um, an extension. So let's just do a little bit of tidying up here. So I'm just going to go trim, TR for trim, or if I want to go modify, uh, there it is there, trim extended corner. Okay, so I just want to trim those two together. Okay, that's that's closed the, that has closed the loop okay um, this one here I want to um, have a setback of around about 1200 millimeters from there to the boundary okay so in order to figure that out I'm going to use my temporary dimensions here so when I click on that wall there we go click on it I get this temporary dimension and if I zoom into that temporary dimension okay I get this little a little button here so that says move witness line and the witness line is what's actually attaching to an element for dimensioning so I don't want that move that one but what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this witness line here okay left click grab it okay now it's chasing my cursor and I'm going to sit it on this one here now this line is parallel with that line so it will witness quite nicely okay and you'll see that, that our temporary dimension changed okay so it's see it is now saying 1792 so I'm now going to change that just going to click on that temporary dimension okay and um, uh, we'll make it about 1200 and actually no change my mind one two three because in the past I've had issues trying to get doors into those sort of gaps I'll make it 1300 left click okay so I should have enough gap in there to place a door okay um, another quick thing we're going to do is just locate a spot for this garage okay so I'm just going to go wall okay I'm going to grab um, a stud timber 90 wall here okay and without connecting anything up just yet I'm just going to roughly box in where I think the garage is going to be. So I'm doing a bit of forward planning. Okay, so the first thing now I'm going to do is sort of adjust everything a little bit. So I'm going to do that whole temporary dimension thing again. So I'm going to left click on this wall here. Now, because that temporary dimension is, is looking for the next available item, but what I want to do is grab this witness line and tack on to this wall here. Okay, so I've now got a length of 8700. I don't need that much for a single garage. Okay, so I can say 6000, which is the minimum requirement 
within, a, within Australia for a garage for the minimum depth. Next one we're going to do is this one here. Okay, so this one here, this temporary dimension is going from that wall to that wall there. Okay, so and the minimum width for a garage is 3,500 millimeters. That's for a covered garage or a covered car, por car park in Australia. Okay, um, however, this timber frame wall does not have any plaster attached to it yet. So I need to make this wall 351. Zero. Okay. What that's going to do is that when we boost this and give it its plaster, it will chop this length down a little bit. So let's go go three five one zero. I'm going to go enter. There we go. Okay. So now it's just a matter of I'm just going to click on this wall here. Let's go grab drag that grip and lock it into there. I am now going to um, use my align tool. So modify um, align. So with the align tool, what we're doing is we're going. Where do we want to go, and what are we going to align? So little trick here. With um, when we start adding plasterboard to rivet walls, it starts to sort of get a bit confused because there yeah, I've picked up my center line there. And now it's picked up my. Hopefully you can see it. It's picked up the plaster wall. The thing is, is, I want the timber frame wall and that to be lined up. So let's go look at a couple of things. So I've got a wall face here. Okay. Let's try um, center of core. Let's see what happens with that. Center of core. Oh, there we go. So the, the core of this wall is this one here, because this is the load bearing component. So I can go center here, and I can take the center of this one, because this is, a, is its own core. There we go. So there I aligned, this is where I was going to, and that's what I was aligning. Now I can drag this down, so it hooks in. Okay, and you will see that we've got the plaster here, we've got the wall, and we've got more plaster. And this wall was lacking the plaster at the moment. Okay, now the other little thing I want to do here before we do anything else, okay, I'm just going to hold my control key. I'm going to select both of these walls. See what happens when I hold the control key down? There's a little plus appears by the cursor. That means you can do a multi select. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go finish face, instead of my location line being finish face exterior, I'm going to make that core center line. Okay, so that doesn't change the position of the wall, but now it has been drawn from the middle. So when we add the plaster bill, 10 millimeters either side, that should line up with this plasterboard here. Okay, do another quick align here, so we get this wall here sorted out. Align, Ooh, what's going on here? Align, center of core from that one there to this one here, bang, done. Okay, so now we've got our three and a half by six meter garage. We've got some lines sorted out. Next time we meet, uh, we'll add a few more pieces um, to the puzzle. But until then, we will see you later.